So here. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Oh, that's awfully close. Awfully close. Let's see. Let's pull the table over. Frightening thing, you know. This object here. <laughs> came out uh, in one month, and um, Howard Hughes had just had his airplane accident, remember? Uh, and uh, he sent for them, and I went to 20th, where Ben Lyon was head of casting, and didn't I tell you that? No. Well, he came out, he, there was a long waiting, uh, I mean, the hard benches were sitting out. Uh, people of all ages and sizes and everything. He came and he says, who is this girl? So he said, I look so fresh and young and I don't know what all. He was very enthusiastic. I mean, he said, he said, oh, he says, you're, oh, you know, you had high hopes for me. Well, they made a Technicolor test uh, the following day, which was unusual, but they sort of sneaked it in. All of them got together as a in the talent department, uh, and they put me into contract, under stock contract, for a year, and then I was dropped. And then, um, then I was hired at Columbia. Then when I was hired back after the Asphalt Jungle, you know, the 20th Century Fox, um, Zanik said, I understand you used to be uh, here. I said, that's right. Well, uh, things are quite different now. <laughs> I said, um, and he said, I had a three-dimensional quality having to do with sex. He says, uh, he says, quite reminiscent of Harlow. And it was interesting since Ben Lyon had been saying that. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Because, well, I wanted my mother's maiden name because I felt that rightfully was my name. I couldn't take my father's name very well. So uh, I wanted at least something that was related. So I said, I want the name Monroe, which was my mother's maiden name. And uh, the true things are rarely, the true things rarely get into circulation. It's usually the false things. Yes, that's what she claimed. But as a friend of my husband says, he was he was one of our lesser presidents. <laughs> Surely, I was at the Hollywood Studio Club. Although they say that I wasn't, I was. I know it was me. <laughs> it happened to. <clears throat> was I? It was me. I. It was I. It was all true. I was behind in the rent, and they usually let you get about a week behind in the rent. And since, you know, they write me and say, you're the only one who doesn't support this wonderful, uh, you know, <gasps> wonderful. It's not so wonderful unless you're working and paying your rent. Tom Kelly had asked me, I had done some beer ads for beer for him, and he had asked me to pose nude. Actually, I'd be in a bathing suit or something like that. So he asked me to pose nude. And his wife, Natalie Kelly, she'd be in the dressing room. I'd be getting dressed and changing. So she said to him, probably, uh, you know, she got to do nudes or something. And then sometimes other photographers, Willinger had asked me, well, we won't put his name on it, um, had asked me, oh, and I would say, I don't do Sorry. And one time, Andre Dienes, uh, I went on an interview, and he said, uh, so you do nudes? I said, no, I don't do nudes, never. So I always went around saying never. And then I got so far behind the rent, four weeks, and I owed, I was in debt and everything. So I called up and I said, are you sure they won't recognize you? He said, I promise. 
I said, well, if it's at night and you don't have any helpers, you know, to put the lights in. I said, I don't know. I said, I'm shy and I don't want to um, expose myself to, you know, all, all the people you have. And I said, and at night. He said, all right, just Natalie and myself. So we did it. And uh, that's all. He just uh, spread out some red velvet and had me lie down on the red velvet. I thought, you know, they put some kind of lotion on you or something. Nothing, just, you know. It was very simple and drafty. <laughs> calendars? No, they've all been stolen. And I wanted to keep one for my grandchildren. But I can't keep them. I don't know who takes them. If I, if I get a copy and I pack it away, it'll be gone. Yes. Um, by the time it was known, I had already done the Asphalt Jungle. Um, I was hired at Fox. And I remember uh, they called on the set, the publicity department, and they said uh, something to the effect of, did you pose for a calendar? And I said, yes, anything wrong? There was great anxiety in their voices. You all don't say you did. Say you didn't. So I said, but I did. I signed the release, and I did, and I feel I should say it, so I did say that I did, and they were very unhappy about it. Uh, and then I, um, the cameraman who was working on the film at that time, he got a hold of one, and he asked me if I'd sign it. And so I said, yes, I would. I signed it, and I said, two, you know, to him and then his name and I said this isn't my best angle and of course they got madder this studio <laughs> <laughs> and they said but you can't sign those and I said but it's me and they'd rather have these than the other sign if they're friends I don't sign for strangers but they're friends or some I said um, do you like me better with long hair <laughs> Because <laughs> the hair was down to here, my hair, before I did the actual jungle. Little by little, I think Fox got used to it. <laughs> yeah, do hunger will eat bara after mat? No, I was really hungry to, you know, to eat. When you live at the Hollywood Studio Club, you get two meals a day. You get breakfast and you get dinner. Of course, it doesn't taste very good, but still you eat. I always supported myself. I was never what you call, um, I don't know, how can I say it? No one else ever supported me in my life, in my older life, you know, like. But I didn't, I had no family, and um, I mean, I had no place to go just to uh, have a roof over my head. Of course, and a lot of people said, well, why didn't you go and get a job in a 10 cent store, something like that. And I, because I didn't have a high school education, they wouldn't accept me. That's not true. Uh, neither are true. Uh, my mother's first husband was named Baker. Uh, her second husband was Mortensen, but uh, she was long since divorced when I was born. So, um, on my birth certificate, I believe it says, profession, baker. So she was just trying to think quickly, I guess, and said, baker. Uh, well, in all my school records, it was Norma Jean Baker. In fact, um, I was always told, by the way, when I was very young, that my father was killed in an automobile accident in New York before I was born. When I was very young, I was told that. Yes. Um, as regards your mother, to you she was just a woman with a red hair. Um, actually, she was. You see, when I was very young, 
um, I called every woman I would see, I'd say, oh, there's a mama. And if I, see a, if I would see a man, I'd say, there's a daddy. Or papa, I guess you say in French. So to learn that, that she was my mother uh, was quite a shock, you know. It was the woman with the red hair. The people <clears throat> I was staying with, I was about three, and um, one morning I was having a bath, actually, and uh, I referred to the woman as Mama, and she said, I'm not your mother, the one who comes here with the red hair and so forth. She's your mother. Don't call me Mother anymore. Call me Aunt so-and-so. But the one I was concerned was her husband. I says, but he's my daddy. She said, no. You call him uncle so-and-so, although they weren't my aunt and uncle. I never lived with my mother. <coughs> I don't know about the 12 days old. I don't remember, but I know I was very young. You were No. Um, I used to ask where my mother was when I... Oh, I don't know, I was about, well, when I was put in the orphan's home, and I refused to go into the orphan's home, I mean, I, I said, I saw the orphan, I could read a ten orphan, and I put my feet down on the sidewalk, and they had to drag me, and I said, I'm not an orphan, and so, um, I, I thought, well, she's dead somewhere, and, and then later, uh, some people said, uh, uh, well, it's better you forget about your mother. I said, well, where is my mother? And I said, well, it's better you forget about her. She's dead. So I was told that. So whatever invented, I don't know what they mean by it. It was all kind of vague. You know, I couldn't find out anything for sure. I wasn't eight because when I was eight, I remember where I had... Uh, when I had a birthday at eight years old, and so I would still be seven, and my mother did buy a home, um, but I didn't see her very often. Uh, it was very, um, well, the circumstance is very unhappy and kind of haphazard. I didn't see her very much. Uh, the English couple that I told you, uh, they were the couple. They came to live there in the home, but uh, we only had a, a home for about, oh, maybe, I don't even think it was three months. With the English couple, I, they, they used to uh, take me to the Egyptian where they used to have monkeys in cages outside, and they put me there early in the morning, and I'd watch the monkeys. And, or else they take me to the Grams Chinese. I try to uh, fit my foot. Uh, my feet prints are there now, but I would try to, uh, you know, but they had these, uh, what do you call those? Uh, uh, high vamped. Gloria Swanson on the big Yeah, and I never could get my feet in there. My feet were always too big. <laughs> Every Saturday and Sunday, uh, I was taken there because, uh, they worked during the week, they worked very hard, and they didn't want to be bothered with a child around the house, I think. You know, it's, you can't blame them, they were very tired. And uh, so I was taken there in the morning, I'd wait till the movie opened for 10 cents, I would go in, sit in the first row, and I watched all kinds of movies like Cleopatra with Claudia Colbert, that I remembered very well. I'd sit there and I'd see it over and over and over and over again. Till late at night. Um, I was supposed to come out at dark, but of course I didn't know when it was dark, just before dark. Because with their conscience, they didn't want me to come, you know, at night, but I never knew when it was dark. And besides, it was much nicer there. You know, just seeing the movie over and over and over and over again. <laughs> no, it didn't matter. I, kn I knew I'd eat when I got home, eat something.
Let's see, I don't think there's 12, but there were quite a few. Because I was going to stay with these people from New Orleans, and um, then suddenly I was taken to the orphan's home. Uh, let's see, so I'd be, so counting the orphan's home. You want me to count all of them? I'll try, let's see. Three. You see, some places I lived, uh, I was taken there at the end of the school term, and they were planning to keep me, but then after the summer they'd had enough, <laughs> so, um, or for whatever reason, and then I was taken to another place, so that's why there's so many. I know I went to six different grammar schools. You know, that's, uh, that's before you're in the uh, seventh grade. But I'll, I'll try to recall, let's see. I'm to nine so far, just a second. Ten. Ten. But I moved back to a place where I had stayed. So that would make eleven different moves, but ten. Ten counting the orphans home. Mm-hmm. Ten different places. Good time. Oh, such a bright, cheerful place. According to my calls, uh, I well, guess it is too. now. They've made a lot of improvements. Um, I used to sit up in the window and cry because I'd look over and I'd see RKO and I knew my mother had worked there and she'd been a cutter there and all the kids were asleep. I used to sit up in the window <coughs> and um, at night and um, as I say when everyone was asleep and I, when I went there to work uh, during Clash by Night, I stood there, and I wanted to see back to, to, to see if I could see the orphanage, but you can't. It's too many sound stages in the way, and office buildings and homes. Oh, by the way, I slept in a room with 27 beds, because uh, they, they say some other number, I know, when I read it. Um, because you had to work your way to the honor bed. You start with one, well, really the 27th bed, and you had to work your way down and around, and, and then you could work yourself into the other dormitory, which had fewer beds, but I got there once, but uh, once I was putting on my shoes, and the matron said, go downstairs, I'm tying my shoe. She says, back to the 27th bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we lived there. Um, we all had jobs. Um, I had different jobs. I worked for a while. Oh, we'd get up at six in the morning, and we did our work before we went to a public school. It's very... Um, um, well, it's bad to have uh, children from a institution like that go to a public school because in the public school the kids say, oh, they're from the home. They're from the home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the <orphans> home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, and you feel, uh, I always tried to go around as if I were one of the other kids, <laughs> you know. And uh, we all were ashamed, you know, to uh, have been from the orphan home. Well, I was very tall and thin. Um, I was taller than all the. I was as tall as I am now, and very, very thin. Mm -hmm. At eleven, things changed. <laughs> but uh, and I never grew any taller. But they all always said, "Oh, she's going to be a very tall girl." <laughs> <clears throat> oh, in fact, when I was first going, uh, when I first. Uh, went to the orphanage, um, and they pulled me in, you know, they took one arm here, and they pulled, pulled me in, I kept crying, screaming, I'm not an orphan, and then there was a dining room straight ahead, and there were 
these hundred, you know, 100 kids sitting there eating at 5 o'clock, and then a child, you know, you're ashamed to cry in front of other children. So I stopped right away, and then the children filed out and went to the, um, they were sitting on the porch after dinner, they usually did that, on the girls' side, and um, they all thought I was at least uh, 14. I was so tall. <laughs> I thought I was going to be in the ad girl. <laughs> Whoever they were. Well, anything tasted good to me. I, I always, um, when I was a child, I, I ate everything because the families that I lived with, they said they never saw a child who would eat everything. I'd eat anything. Everything. Oh, there was one other family I stayed with for a short time, but it was only for about Are you three weeks. I forgot to mention, Meg Salenum. I liked uh, singing, uh, athletics, English. I hated arithmetic. I never had my mind on it. You know, I was always dreaming out the window. <laughs> and then... Two, uh, another thing, people would remark not only that I would eat everything, but they, I, I never complained when I went to bed. Uh, I, would, I would even say, I think I'll go to bed now. They say, well, that's very unusual because children, they say, no, I don't want to go to bed. But what I would do <clears throat> would be to go in my room, and, uh, except at the orphan's home, it was different. But... Otherwise, I would go in my room, and um, if I had seen a movie, I would act out every part. Only I would act out before that happened, or after, and I would act out all the parts, the men as well as the women. That's what I'd be doing, you know, standing up on my bed, <laughs> being taller, and <laughs> even... <laughs> Just the feeling, what he said and what she said and what he felt and she felt, and usually be sad. <laughs> How tall are you, Karen? Five or six? Five, six, exactly. <clears throat> mm -hmm. First time was at the orphanage, and then later in my teens I stuttered, and I was... Um, uh, they elected me secretary of the English class. No, secretary of the minutes of the English class, whatever you call it. And uh, then I say, minutes of the last meeting. I like a moon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was terrible. When? I don't know. Let's see, I had the orphanage, and after I left, I guess, and then when I was about 13, I took it up again. <laughs> it just, I don't know it, uh, how it happened. I just stuttered. Sometimes if I'm uh, very nervous or excited or something, I stutter. In fact, one time they were doing a, uh, I had a small part in the movie, and the um, uh, assistant director came in and yelled at me. Oh, he talked awful. And he... And so I... Uh, when, when I got into the scene, I, instead of my legs, I... Woo, 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 and the director came up. He was furious. He says, you don't stutter. I said, that's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's painful. Oh, God. Well, when I went to live with uh, a woman, her name is Mrs. E, period, Anna Lauer, and I used to do the dishes in the evening and whistling, and she said, I never heard a child sing so much. So I did it during that period. I, I liked being uh, with her, staying with her. I always kept in touch with her. She's, I loved her very dearly. And then I, I adored her. Well, they used to call me the mouse because I didn't 
I, I never said anything, and I was quiet uh, most of the time, except with other children. I had imagination. Other children liked to play with me because I could think of things. You know, I'd say, now we're going to have a murder, then a divorce, and then a... And then they say, how do you think I that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so other children, uh, you know, I, I could be um, myself with other children, but with grown-ups, I, I was always very quiet. Went around about doing my work, you know, whatever I had to do. Oh, no, okay. How did that I don't want to say too much. Well, uh, Grace arranged it. She and her husband were going to um, West Virginia, and they were going to put me in a uh, a home, or you know, like I'd been before, or I could marry this uh, boy who was 21 at the time. So I married. Oh no. I was 15, turning 16. I, when marriage took place, I was just turned 16. In the state of California, you can marry uh, a 16 girl. But it was arranged when I was 15. No, not at all. Then uh, he was drafted to go into the army, but instead he went to the Merchant Marine. Yes, towards the end of the war, I divorced him. When I divorced him, no, I was 20. I went to Las Vegas to divorce him. I don't know <laughs> if they let you see one, they let you see the other. <laughs> well, how does it feel being yourself? That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> I don't know. One time, a very wonderful director, Kazan, said, I had no ambition. That was my problem, my trouble. But I, I, I would like very much to be uh, a fine actress, a true actress, that's what I mean by fine, a real actress. I would like to be happy, but who's happy? <laughs> I think... Trying to be happy is almost as difficult as trying to be a good actress. <laughs> you have to work at both of them. Well, I think comedy is uh, harder for me. I mean, it's just harder to act comedy, I think. For me, it seems that way. Uh, but I would like uh, a variety of parts, you know. Dramatic, sometimes comedy. Not musical too much because, not too much because um, I never studied it. I always wanted to, but I never did. And it's very difficult. And after you've finished it, they say, oh, well, you, you just did it like that. And really, all you do is really <laughs> so much <laughs> cooler. <laughs> it looks so easy. It looks, looks like you just walk through it. And I've never studied that, either singing or dancing. Really. It is. It takes, a, it takes its toll. <laughs> I think an artist, uh, artist, I consider myself becoming an artist, so you excuse me, some people will laugh. I don't apologize. To you, but to them, I apologize. <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, the work is so, you know, you, you, you try to be true, and uh, uh, you feel sometimes it's on the verge of a kind of craziness, but it isn't really craziness. It's really uh, getting the truest part of yourself out and it's very hard you know I mean it's not easy let's say and yet it can be very simple at the same time um, being an artist because sometimes you think oh well all I have to 
easily is true, but sometimes it doesn't come so easily. Well, I always have a secret um, feeling that I'm really a fake or something, or phony, or you know how people feel about themselves. They have something secret they feel about themselves. I always feel that. I know my teacher says, why do you feel that about yourself? And then he started to say, but you're a human being. I said, yes, I am. I said, but I feel like I have to be more. He says, no. He says, you start with yourself, Lee Strasberg. I think probably he changed my life more than any other human being that I've met, including um, everyone. Um, because when I started um, to work with him, I would sort of assume something. And he says, what are you doing? I said, well, I have to get into the party. He says, no, but you're a human being, so you start with yourself. I said, but with me? He said, yes, with you. So, uh, in a way, if you can concentrate uh, correctly, I don't mean deep thinking where you, you know, pounding the skull, but if you can just concentrate simply, that's what I mean about being easy. Anyway, he helped me a great deal. I have a hard time at it. <laughs> I don't know. I might leave something out, but I won't put anything else in extra. I might leave something out because uh, to my benefit or somebody else's benefit, hurt people or hurt myself sometimes, you know. We all want to protect ourselves also. So uh, I might leave something out, but uh, I, I, I don't think I... Uh, no, I, I don't think I lie. At least if I would try, it's difficult. But I do want to be wonderful. You know, when I walked out of 20th Century Fox and I went to New York and I stayed for I don't know how many months, 15 months, 13 months, I don't know how many months, and the lawyer, you know, he said, um, uh, oh, he was telling me uh, about my tax deductions, my I don't know what, and about Oh, the lawyer for 20th Century Fox. I said, I don't know about that. I only know I want to be wonderful. Because <laughs> you say that to a corporation lawyer, he <laughs> thinks you're mad. <laughs> and that's at the bottom of everything, you know, that I do want. People were making them up. It's not true. There was nobody there that nope. was smart. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> well, they, 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 they never made them up. Uh, and they were often more advanced by them, horrified. Yeah, like, well, you know, they ask you questions like, you know, well, just an example, what do you wear to bed? Uh, you wear a pajama top, the bottoms of the pajamas, or the uh, nightgown, or what kind of, so I said, Chanel number five. Because it's, it's the truth. <laughs> and yet I don't want to say nude, you know, but it's, it's the truth. Or, um, I don't know, uh, all of those things come from the truth. If you ever get any of those things you want to ask, uh, what does it mean, I'll tell you where, where the truth comes from or what it does mean. Because I, as I say, I don't, I leave things out. I don't elaborate sometimes. But it'll be from the truth. Because otherwise, it's hard to know where to start if you don't start with the truth. Okay, here, uh, I get up early in the morning. I jump into my clothes, uh, get my belongings together, get in the car, and I have a driver. He brings me to the studio. Uh, and I have somebody waiting here who makes my breakfast, then they start with the hair and the makeup, and I eat while they're doing my hair. And then they leave it that way while the makeup man, he comes in, he does the makeup. And uh, then they comb out the hair later. And they put on the body makeup and then the clothes. I don't like to rush this 
process because I find if I rush, I'm very tired. By the time I have to do a scene, I'm all worn out from rushing through the hair and the makeup and the clothes. So I like to do it leisurely, like I like to dress when I go out in the evening. I love to dress leisurely. I like to soak in the tub, then leisurely. Uh, I like music. <laughs> I think that we're rushing too much nowadays. That's why people get nervous. Well, I don't think I'm late all the time, but maybe it is because I can't go as fast as other people. You know, people that get in automobiles, they run into each other uh, because they're, they never stop. They're going like that. And I don't think that mankind, it's intended for them to go like that. They're not supposed to be like machines. And I think you get more done uh, the other way by doing it more sensibly, more leisurely. Mr. Cukor on this film has been very wonderful to me in as much as he lets me come in an hour later than I would usually come in. So <clears throat> it helps because I'm fresher at the end of the day. It helps. He says he does it for my work, and I think it's so. I think actors in movies work too long hours. They also too long. Uh, always, nearly always. Sometimes I feel a doom set over me. Just as I'm walking on the stage, it's just like a doom sets on me. I don't know why, but I get over it sometimes. Sometimes it lasts all day. <laughs> uh, well, um, I want to do my best, the best that I can do in that moment. When the camera starts until it stops. That moment I want to be perfect. As perfect as I can make it. I used to go to um, movies on Saturday night when, for instance, uh, when I worked in a factory, and that was my only time that I could enjoy myself, really, that I really relaxed and enjoyed. And this is on tape. We're trying to think. Excuse us. <laughs> and... Uh, so, uh, I used to be very disappointed if I went to a movie, because I waited all week to go to the movie. I, and I worked hard for the money that I spent. And uh, if I went to a movie and it was a bad movie, or I thought people didn't do their best, kind of uh, did it sloppy or something. I really was mad, you know, angry when I left, because then I didn't have anything to go on for a whole week. I'd wait for another week. So I always feel that I work for the ones who work hard and they go to the box office and put down their money and they want to be entertained or I always feel I do it for them. But I do care because I know how the others feel. You know, they've worked hard all week and my favorite stars then? Oh, I liked anybody who was good. Sometimes they'd be good, sometimes they wouldn't, you know, depend. Oh, well, that was when I was very small. That's when I was seven years old. Uh, when I was seven years old, my favorite was Jean Harlow. And the reason why she was my favorite, because she had white hair, and I had white hair. And they used to call me Toehead. I don't know how you'd say it in French, but it was white hair instead. And I dreamed of having, having golden hair, but instead mine was white. <laughs> and so when she, she had white hair, I felt sort of um, close to her because she had white hair, I had white hair. And Clark Gable, I'm sure he won't mind if I say it, because in a Freudian sense, it's, it's supposed to be very good. Uh, I used to always think of him as my father. I pretended that he was my father. I never pretended anyone was my mother. I don't know why. But I always pretended he was my father. I was just seven years old, and he was a very young man, and uh, I thought that's how I wanted my father to look. Last, <laughs> uh, I think it's a rare thing and not to be discounted at all, not to be pushed away in a corner. I find 
That's why I like poetry, I think, also. They don't discount it. They take it uh, for its worth, its value. Uh, it's one of the most important things that ever happens to us. I think the most important thing. I think love and work are the only things that really happen to us. And everything else is just, um, you know, doesn't really matter. And I think uh, one without the other isn't so good. I think they both need... I think, I don't know. I mean, it's 84, I have a few years to go yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's uh, I, I think it's the most important thing because even work is a kind of love it's something that you'd love to do even uh, workers factory workers I, I used to take pride in the way that I would do it even though I did it very fast I would take a pride in the fact that I would do it exactly perfect, as perfect as I could, you know. So I think that, well, I guess I'm a little impetuous, <laughs> Paula says. <laughs> Exclusive. I think I am, because I have very few friends, but not to be exclusive, it's just that uh, I like Although I, I like people, but for friends, I like few people. A few people, I guess you call it. Well, uh, I met him the year he retired. He had already retired. And uh, I saw him for about a year and a half, two years, and we married in San Francisco. And um, his background, uh, you know, his family, they were immigrants, and they had a very difficult time, and, and when he was Young, he had a very difficult time. The only thing, he was a wonderful athlete. And he could hit a baseball. Anything thrown in his direction, he, can, he could hit. So uh, he understood uh, some things about me, and I understood some things about him, and we based our marriage on it. And I say some things. Well, I don't want to say that. I just say we understood some things about each other. He has a very sensitive nature in many respects. You know, one thinks of an athlete as being, I don't know, not having that, but they do. Um, our marriage wasn't a happy one. It ended in uh, nine months. Unfortunately, I don't know what else to say. Uh, do I feel happy in life? Um, um, let's see. Let's say I hope I'm finding happiness. All right? Well, for me, uh, if I can realize certain things in my work, uh, I come the closest to being happy, and I can say that also about my life. Well, it only happens, I think, in moments, sometimes when I'm working, and, uh, and I'll be able to uh, uh, fulfill a scene truthfully and then I think I'm the happiest. Well, I find it very stimulating to keep studying and working, um, uh, but it, I'm not just generally happy. If I'm generally anything, I guess I'm generally miserable. 
<laughs> I don't know. Sometimes? Uh, sometimes, I think. You like... I don't know. I think sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Which is natural, I guess, for everyone. Um... I would like to be more sociable than I am. On some days. You know, sometimes I'll chat when I'm not pleased, but sometimes the work itself requires uh, more... Uh, that I'm quiet and to myself more. And other days, like during a musical number, I try not to get too... Uh, uh, I like to be more outgoing because I have that's what I have to express and so I try to keep it general I try to even if I feel like it or not I'll try to make the effort to make contact with people around me yes because I could easily be alone it doesn't bother me to be alone some people I know they, uh, they don't like to be alone I don't mind it I need it as a rest and yeah it kind of refreshes myself yeah and a rest. Yes, I think there's two things in human beings that they, as I think there is in myself, um, that they want to be alone, but they also want to be together. You know? Because I think I have also a, a gay side to me, also a sad side. And I think that's the way with people also. Yeah. But there is something in people where they want, they need solitude for a while. Yes, it was. Um, he came with uh, Elia Kazan on the set of a picture called um, Young As You Feel. And, uh, and, uh, as he describes it, I was crying when he met me. A friend of mine, um, had died, and, uh, anyway, Kazan came over and he said he was very sorry, and I burst into tears, we had Arthur with him, and so, he, even though I was in tears, he introduced me to Arthur. So Arthur, I, I'd forgotten, but he said I was crying when I, you know, in tears, weeping. He met me. Uh, then I didn't see him for about four years. Um, I, I used to think that maybe he might see me in a movie, for instance, there'd be two pictures playing, they used to have it. I thought, and I might be in the other movie, you'd see me and I'd want to do my best. <laughs> because he said that he thought that uh, I should act on the stage. And um, people who were around heard him say it, they laughed. But he said, no, I'm very serious. At that time, I mean. It was in 1950. In 1950. Does one ever know that? I mean, I know certain qualities uh, that I remembered at the time, but <clears throat> I don't know exactly what... Uh, I think that's uh, mysterious. No, I can't say he gave me a feeling of security. There wasn't any reason for him to, really, except uh, he treated me as a human being, and he was... Um, <clears throat> very sensitive human being and treated me, treated me as a sensitive person also. I can't, I don't know how to describe it. No, of course it's very difficult. 